Thank you, Minister Hunt. Official conference partners, distinguished guests, and all our conference delegates. On behalf of Palliative Care Australia and the 2021 Oceanic Palliative Care Conference Executive Committee, it's my great pleasure to welcome you to 21 OPCC. Palliative Care Australia is located in Canberra on the land of the Ngunnawal people. I wish to acknowledge the traditional owners of this land, the Ngunnawal people and their elders past, present and emerging. I acknowledge and respect their continuing culture and the contribution they make to the life of this city and this region. There are many important organisations and individuals that I wish to welcome and thank as per protocol on an occasion such as this. But today I would like to break from that formality and tradition and instead begin by thanking the delegates in attendance today. I'd like to thank you not simply for your involvement in this conference, but as representatives of the palliative care sector in Australia and the surrounding oceanic regions. We are living in extraordinary times. While Australia relative to the rest of the world has been spared and the most severe impact of COVID-19, we have nonetheless as a nation been deeply and severely affected. And with much of Australia finding itself just emerged or still in lockdown or threatened with that prospect, COVID-19's devastating impact on the way we work, our way of life, even the circumstances in which we die or grieve the loss of our loved ones continues unabated. Last night, we announced the winner of the National Palliative Care Awards. Many of you were in attendance. I'd like to echo the sentiments of that awards ceremony last night. The Palliative Care Australia National Awards are held every two years in conjunction with the biennial Oceanic Palliative Care Conference. And on any given awards year, the caliber of those nominated and their work and their record of achievement is always of a high standard. When judging the awards, we are seeking excellence and to do so, we elevate one nomination above another, such is the nature of awards. In an ordinary year, it is important that we acknowledge the passion, the selflessness and dedication of all Australians engaged in the palliative care sector. All of us here recognise that palliative care is a vocation like no other. In short, every one of us is deserving of recognition. Of course, the last 18 months have been anything but ordinary. COVID-19 is the defining moment in our lives, impacting Australia and the world like no other event in the history of this generation. So before thanking the official partners who have contributed so greatly to getting us here today, I would instead first like to thank all of you for your ongoing contribution, your tireless efforts to serve your patients, their families, your services, organisations and institutions, your colleagues in the most difficult and at times unimaginable circumstances. Thank you. I would now like to thank those who've contributed so generously to ensuring the success of the conference. Firstly, I would like to thank the Australian Government for its generous support in partnering with Palliative Care Australia and to deliver a scholarship program that has ensured over 100 participants are being able to be with us today. And I'm delighted to welcome all the scholarship recipients to the conference this morning. Fittingly, this Oceanic Conference also boasts strong support from its international partner organisation, Hospice New Zealand, the Asia Pacific Hospice and Palliative Care Network, the International Association for Hospice and Palliative Care, the Worldwide Hospice Palliative Care Alliance, and the European Association for Palliative Care and Australasian Palliative Care Link International. Your support is invaluable. Over these next three days, I trust the conference will facilitate knowledge and skill transfer across the oceanic region and beyond. I wish to thank the generosity and the enthusiasm of all our conference sponsors. Your contribution and support is critical and extremely welcome. And finally, I wish to thank the generous contribution from all members of the conference program committee Together with my fellow members of the Executive Committee, Professor Deb Parker, Professor Jen Tiemann, Ms Linda Hansen and the team at Palliative Care Australia. Planning for this conference got underway a year ago, it's hard to imagine. 
At that time, one thing was very clear. We knew the conference would be impacted and informed by COVID-19. And we recognised that impact would extend far beyond the type of conference we held. More importantly, it would inform and shape the conference themes, streams and aspirations. Rather than see limitations and restrictions, the OPCC 21 executive saw opportunity. In going virtual, we saw opportunity to provide certainty to the palliative care sector, and most importantly, to prioritise the health, safety and welfare of people who work in the sector and the people they care for. In going virtual, we were afforded a unique opportunity to present new research and case studies about quality palliative care and end-of-life care to a much broader Australian and international audience. Indeed, with the additional challenges of travel and accommodation removed, the conference this year will be more accessible, particularly for those beyond Australia's shores. Palliative Care Australia has hosted the conference every two years since the inaugural Australian National Hospice Palliative Care Conference in Adelaide in September 1990. The conference has always been a flagship event in the palliative care sector's calendar in Australia and never more so in 2021, as Palliative Care Australia celebrates its 30th year of influence, fostering and promoting the delivery of quality palliative care for all who need it, when and where they need it. This year's conference theme, Invest, Challenge, Change, builds on the continuing global push to ensure that we build better, more resilient health systems for the future, better able to meet critical care needs in normal circumstances and sufficiently resourced to meet needs during these times of emergency and crisis. The RICH conference program covers 10 conference themes, population groups, ethics and law and its interface with clinical practice, caring for older people, an interdisciplinary approach to care, grief and bereavement, investing in strong strict systems and structures in palliative care, clinical care and practice, holistic care, paediatric palliative care, and the impact of voluntary assisted dying in palliative care practice. The comprehensive program recognises the breadth of palliative care and some of the significant issues to be tackled both in Australia and the region, such as the need for greater investment in palliative care, COVID-19's impact on grief and bereavement, and dealing with a rapidly ageing population and its impact on palliative care. 21 OPCC boasts over 100 live presentations, five international presentations, 10 workshops, five industry panels, the National Palliative Care Awards Ceremony held last night, and even a virtual conference choir. Even without the pressures of work and family, none of us will be able to consume all of the conference content over the coming days. We also, of course, very conscious of the work and family pressures of many at the moment, if not all of you are under right now. So as a reminder, all of this week's content will be available on demand post-conference for a period of 12 months for all conference delegates to watch. As important as the efforts of those involved in planning and staging of this week's conference are, and as much as the success of OPCC 21 has already been largely determined by the quality of the abstracts submitted, it is my hope that all of the delegates in attendance will enthusiastically engage with the conference content and find valuable opportunities to exchange knowledge and ideas and to meet like-minded individuals to engage with over the next few days. Thank you and enjoy 21 OPCC.